Welcome to the Nick Spinelli Show. Nick Spinelli Show. Nick Spinelli Show. Still have no song to play in the beginning. Song to play in the beginning. <laughs> this is so stupid. Why am I doing this? Less than a minute till the show. St- I, I got nothing. I, I need to learn how to freestyle. So I got nothing. Okay, bye. We got Jacob Clark in the house, DJ Donovan Yawkey, Nathan Jones in the crib. Oh my God, I'm so bad at this. I really got to figure this out. I don't think about it until it's, why am I talking right now? We'll talk later. 24 seconds. Well, I'm not trying to go on the voice, Maurice. All right. I'm not trying to go on the, on the voice. I kind of realize that I'm messing up the allure of the countdown. It's supposed to be like, you know, Hollywood countdown. Then I just appear out of nowhere. And it's like, you know, Bob Barker coming on stage here for another great show, you know, and then I start, I don't know. I'll figure out the song people. Okay. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. We got Philly in the house. Welcome everybody. Hello. 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 Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. Children's books with Nick Spinelli. I like that children's book i could never write a children's book (laughs) funny story so i go to lancaster this past weekend um on saturday i went to telus 360 because scratch bastard and cosmo baker were playing and i got to see them play great if you ever get a chance to see them play they're so so good so great show a lot of fun uh shouts to eddie and everybody were on the stage and you know he hooked me up and we were hanging out the whole time but anyway so they had an mc that came i think his name was ralph i forget his name and it was this dude who came on he had the craziest voice of all time. The craziest voice. He literally, like, like he, he was like, what's up? I'm Ralph. He had, like, a crazy, like, deep, you know what I mean? Like, a voice, like a radio voice. Like, you know, you, like, and, like, I don't know. I'm just a, uh, I, I, so I kind of, I'm like, dude, you have the craziest voice ever. Do me a favor. And I bust out my phone. I'm like, can you just say Nick Spinelli busting nuts in your baby's mama for me real quick? <laughs> and I was, like, holding my phone to him. <laughs> and he's like, no, man, I can't. <laughs> he just turned me down, right? So, and then he didn't talk to me the rest of the night. He probably thought I was a freaking weirdo. Anyway, so that happened. I'm like, damn. And then all the way home, I'm thinking like, I need to get like these drops like solidified, right? I really just, you know, I need these. Cause like, if you remember, if you watch my show, I had a bunch of drops I made and uh, they were all dumb, but like, I, I, I but honestly, I, 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 I've been meaning to get them like produced, you know, that way it would be cool to kind of like use them live. And Sure enough, right in my email, shout out to uh, the kid RC3, uh, him and his dad produced them for me and they did it as a joke. And they're like, yo, if you need legit drops, let us know. And I'm like, nah, like these are legit drops. Excuse me. <laughs> you guys want to hear them now? They're so good. Ready? Here's the first one. Nick Spinelli in the mix. Your mother's sister's friend's cousin's dog's favorite DJ. <laughs> With the bark at the end. Yo, like he like they produced all of them. Look at this. Nelly just farted in your mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, what more could I want? Nick Spinelli made your ears his bitch. 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 This one? Nick Spinelli just took a dump on your chest. Oh, my God. Okay. And then the final one. Nick Spinelli busting nuts in your baby's mama. Yeah, baby. I mean, it, 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 come on, guys. Come on. And you, you, you think I'm bullshitting. I'm going to use these. I'm going to get it on camera. All right. We're going to um, I'm not going to play these at a wedding, obviously, but I'm doing uh, the club at Penn State uh, this Friday, the basement. Shouts to them. And I'm going to use them. I'm going to figure out different ways to insert them in my sets and just uh, see what happens. <laughs> and I will get it on camera and you will see. So shouts to uh, the kid RC3 for making the drops for me. I appreciate you and his dad. I think his dad helped as well. Appreciate you both. I will put them to good use. I will put them to good use. I'm very excited. 
Anyway, let's get into the nuts and bolts of the show. Um, first of all, we all know the Flex 10 came out. Um, if you haven't seen my video, definitely check it out. I had a good time making it and everything. And um, I got to spend a, a good old week with this bad boy. They don't they don't let us keep them. Um, you gotta gotta. It's usually like a deadline to send it back, especially with Nam coming up. I had to send it back by literally the same day it was announced on Thursday. I had to send it back. So didn't get to keep it for too long, but I got a nice week with her. And um, I like it a lot. You know, a lot of you, number one, real quick, you know, address a couple things. A lot of you are asking, you know, what's better, you know, this or the Rain 4. And like, I really can't answer that question because I don't have the Rain 4. I've never touched the Rain 4. I've never seen it in real life. I've only heard secondhand accounts of it. So like, I don't feel comfortable, like, you know, from afar, especially since like, if I haven't seen both of them, then I'll give you my opinion. Like, you know, but since I've played with this, you know what I mean? Like, I, I got to get a rain four. So if anybody, if you know me and you have a rain four, you're in my area, let me know. And like, I want to kind of check it out and I will do um, a video on it and give you guys my opinion. I mean, from afar, you know, I, I mean, the rain four looks like a beast, you know, it's uh, it, it's set up for Serato, right? It's made for Serato and I'm a Serato guy. So I prefer that. A lot of you were kind of like a little bum that the flex 10 was like set up for record box, but like it's native to Serato. Like they didn't do what they did years ago. And there was a lot of backlash for that. And I feel like that's the reason, like if you remember in 2018 pioneer came out with the DDJ 1000 and it was record box only, but it was like the first comp controller with like legit, like pretty much CDJ platters and everything. Right. If you remember, and everyone was pissed. Everyone that had Serato was like, you guys are just trying to make us go to record box. We're not going to do it. You know? And they're like, they're standing outside of pioneer headquarters with torches and shit. Like everyone was pissed. And then sure enough, a year and a half later, I think it was like late 2019 or something like that, they finally came out with the SRT, which is essentially the 1000, but for Serato and like made for Serato. And then the SRT, they probably sold like 4,000 billion bajillions of them. Look, I got a Aqua Panda today. Ah, look, the glass bottle, right? Huh? Old school with it. Anyway, they sold a ton of the SRTs, right? It was a huge controller, one of the most popular controllers ever. And everyone's been waiting since 2019. So we're looking four years now, which is a pretty long time in the technology world for the replacement. And this ends up being the replacement. They, instead of making two separate products, they made one product. But then, of course, they favored the record box stuff. And, you know, it kind of uh, upset a lot of people. I will say, like, it works very well with Serato all day. You just kind of have to memorize where the buttons are. And then, like, the quick fix is if you love the SRT, if that's your controller, okay, and you love that thing and you use it all the time and you want the next generation of it, buy the Flex 10 and get a skin. I'm sure they're going to make skins somewhere where you could get a skin, put the skin over top of it, and then it'll have all the Pioneer buttons, you know, like the labels for the Pioneer stuff so, or the, the labels for the Serato stuff. So you can essentially, with a skin, change this thing to make it a Serato controller. The only thing you're missing is that extra uh, stem, that extra, instead of just having all the instruments in one, you know, to have the bass and melody separated. Um, that's all you're missing. I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, as far as the rain four, I think it's really, I mean, it, it looks like a beast and it's nice and everything. And like, I just, I got to feel those platters. And uh, the, before, you know, that's the thing. The, the platters are what looks sketch to me. And I'm not, I'm, I don't know if I'm a fan of the screens. I got to see what the screens do and all that. Like those are things. And it's huge. I heard it's literally ginormous. It's so big that like, there's not many cases for the rain four. Like you good luck finding a case, you know, like it's just so big. Like they made it just like a little bigger than like every other controller. And like these case companies are like struggling. Like, why would they make a case just for the rain four only, you know what I mean? Kind of thing. Like, so like, that's like, those are the things I see from afar that like, I feel like might be a little suspect on the rain four, but I don't know. I haven't felt it and all that shit and seen it in real life. So, you know, I'll get my hands on one and then I'll give you guys my verdict. And, you know, we can argue about it in the comments. So, but regardless, I was a fan of the Flex 10. I thought it was great. It really did. Um, there's not many downfalls to it other than it's not, you know, a Serato official, you know, it's not laid out for Serato. That's the biggest downfall of this thing. Other than that, it's sick. It's a great, it's great. Sounds great. Looks great. Feels great. Everything's great. Big fan. So that's the verdict. Okay. In case you guys were wondering. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll have that video come up soon. I'm going to do a... I'm also going to compare record box stems to Serato stems. <laughs> difference. Big difference. We're going to do a, a direct comparison uh, soon. I, I have, I'm have. i working on that now. Uh, so you guys can kind of see the difference in everything and uh, you know understand the differences and kind of make an educated decision on that front because, man, that's crazy. Because Serato just came up with an update for stems. I don't know if you guys saw. <laughs> crazy. 
Um, in other news, Zed, his USB corrupted 20 minutes before his ultra set. He comes up with this tweet, right? And he says, by the way, shouts to DJ Rachel. Her Facebook posts are now feeding my show. <laughs> this is like two weeks in a row. DJ Rachel's Facebook post, by the way, is like giving me ideas of what to talk about on the show. I'm just uh, <laughs> so shouts to DJ Rachel again. But anyway, uh, he says, uh, so bummed about the show last night. Complete nightmare disaster. 20 minutes before stage time. Somehow my USB is corrupted when I updated the set and nothing would load at all. I was literally airdropping songs to Garrick's USBs on my way to the stage. Still no idea what happened. Songs uh, would s say one BPM, but play in another. And I just couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on and was freaking out the entire show. Trying to cut songs to make up time because we went on so late trying to fix it. Uh, shit happens. Just really bummed. It had to be uh, a show like Ultra. So I didn't see the video. I don't know what, like, what exactly happened, but apparently he had a really bad set because everything corrupted. And... Um, you know, how, you know, how, how can we not just uh, briefly just touch on this um, as a, a, you know, I would say primarily a wedding DJ show and I'm primarily a wedding DJ. And, um, you know, you can make fun of us wedding DJs, right? Yeah, we're cheesy. Yeah, we wear cummerbunds, right? Yeah, we have 300,000 song hard drives. But, but we bring backups for everything, everything. <laughs> there, there ain't nothing a wedding DJ don't back up, everything. Most wedding DJs DJ with two laptops up just in case the one in a millionth chance their Serato crashes. They literally have their other laptop up. <laughs> I don't I don't do that. I, I have a backup plan in case that happens, but I don't have two laptops up. But like we're back up to the gods. And if Zed could learn anything from us wedding DJs, just back your shit up. He should have backup USBs on backup USBs. All he should have six USBs, literally identical. And then I also I would have a super oh shit USB that has a pre-made set because he's Zed. So like if you have a pre-made set, like produced everything, I'm sure he's produced a 30 minute set before or something. Put that bitch on a USB and jump up there and just make heart, you know, hand hearts and twist your knobs. And you would have been good. You would have been good, bro. You know, a million ways you could have backed yourself up. And for someone who's making a big bucks, I mean, how much you think Zed dude's got how many hits? How much you think Zed was getting paid for that ultra set? You know, hundred grand, hundred fifty grand for the set, and you didn't bring backup USBs. You just brought two USBs, and then they just corrupted out of nowhere, and you didn't know what to do. Bruh. Yep, craziness, craziness, absolute craziness, people. I um, but what are you gonna do, right? What are you gonna do? He'll he'll learn from this, and I think uh, everyone's gonna look at that as like a shining example of uh why you should bring back up and then they'll bring back up for now and that's it you know and that, that's a cool thing about the bigger djs you can learn from their mistakes right so that's that i have a leak by the way i have a leak are you guys ready you guys ready for this i don't have the picture i couldn't find the picture anywhere i looked 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 and it's really because no one cares about these products like if this was like a pioneer or a rain then i'm sure the picture would be available but i had a leak and i i heard about a product coming out and since there's no picture and no picture is probably going to leak, I might as well just tell you guys about the leak so you can plan accordingly with your future buying stuff. You guys ready? You ready for the leak? It is going to be called the Newmark Mixstream Pro Go. That's what I heard. Okay. It's not confirmed. All right. I would tell you if it was like, you know, 1000% no matter what. But the rumor is that they're essentially going to take their Mixstream Pro Plus that they came out with, and they're going to put a battery in that bitch, and they're going to make it battery-powered. And I know a lot of you are mod modding your Mixstream Pros to have a battery, you know, because it should have a battery. Honestly, you know what I mean? Like, it makes perfect sense. You don't have to mod it. Don't worry about that. 98% sure they are coming out very soon with a battery-powered Mixstream Go Pro or Mixstream Pro. But it's, I think it's going to be called Pro Go. Pro Go. But I, I, you know, I'm not sure about the name, but I'm sure about this product. 98% sure it's coming out soon. So keep an eye out. If it does come out, you heard it here first, people. Okay. The new Mark Mixstream Pro Go. Battery powered Mixstream Pro Go. Coming out soon. Quick leak. Hand has got me. Appreciate you all for coming too, by the way. We got John Gosselin coming on later. It's going to be fun. John Gosselin, right? So... You guys are wondering, um, 
he, he's a really cool guy and he's a DJ. So he started DJing later in life. So he had the show, if you didn't see, like on TLC and everything that uh, John and K plus eight. But then he started DJing later in life. And he has a really interesting story because like when you're like a, a reality TV star and then like you, you know, jump into the DJ world and everything like it's definitely interesting. And there's a lot of like stuff to talk about. So I thought it'd be like a really cool interview. And I know him personally, he's a buddy of mine. So like, you know, finally brought him on and I'm excited to have him on. So definitely stick around for that, people. Um, and there's one other thing I wanted to talk about. It's a little bit of drama. Okay. It's a little bit of drama. It's stupid. I was actually just going to call and curse him out, but I didn't. I said, you know what? I'm not going to. Okay. So I'll just address it just to clear the air for anybody that's seen it. Not a lot of people seen it even, you know what I mean? But like, it drives me nuts when like people, uh, you know, talk about me, you know, behind my back publicly and try and stir some shit. So I'll just address it real quick. Okay. So in this private group, the marquee show community, which by the way, I'm pretty sure I was a part of, I'm pretty sure I was in this group, but then like this post happens and then like I'm out of the group. So I don't know if I got kicked out. I don't know. I thought I was in this group to be honest with you, but I wasn't. So uh, this was screenshot and sent it to me. Right. But the owner of the marquee show, right. This guy named Keith Kokoros. I don't even know how to say his last name. We call him KC. He's the owner of the marquee show in Chicago. And he posts this post, right? And he says, here's something to ponder. Jason Janai, owner of the SC event group, clearly advertises on Wedding Pro and is a Wedding Pro educator. He's also a member of the team that puts together the DJ Collective, which is sponsored by Wedding Pro. I was at the party they sponsored uh, last year, and it was very nice. Nick Spinelli is one of the named DJ talents for Jason's company, SCE. He recently did a video, and it shows that that calls into question whatever. Um, the integrity of wedding pro even at one point even calling them savages and recommending two competing websites i've supplied the link to the video the question now becomes how do two different people at the same company have such opposing views of the same company and which one is right is wedding pro really a bunch of savages that only cares about your money <gasps> se clearly advertised with wedding pro while nick seems to clearly be against it SCE has thousands of reviews and an obscene amount of awards that Nick blasts in his own video, essentially calling them nothing but a marketing gimmick by this company over the years to increase their own popularity. Take a look at the video and tell me what you think is being discussed at the SCE office recently about this video. Oh my God. Ooh, there's turmoil at SCE. Oh my God, Nick must have gotten yelled at for making the... No, no one gives a shit, KC. All right, nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. I'm allowed to have my own opinion. I'm a grown man with a YouTube channel and I can have my own opinion about whatever the hell I want, okay? Number one, okay, number one. The main reason why I made that Wedding Pro video, it wasn't about what it was about Wedding Wire and the Knot, not Wedding Pro, okay? Wedding Pro is like their separate brand for like, you know, the people that they deem to be experts in the industry and they like do education stuff or whatever. I was talking about Wedding Wire and the Knot and I made that video because number one, the not pissed me off with that rating thing. I thought that was messed up and they end up fixing it. But number two, I wanted to basically speak to anybody who's new in the industry and let them know about what these companies do and so they can be make a better educated decision when you start a company, whether or not to advertise and get into all these long-term contracts, because that's what they do. They pry, they prey on the new companies. They prey on when you, you know, start your own little single op or multi multi op, you start your own DJ company, you know, and you get in the business, they prey on you. They, 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 they hit you up, they hop on and they, and, and they try and get you in all these contracts. They try and charge you all this fucking money, you know? And I wanted to educate all the rookies, all the younger people mainly, you know, all the newer companies mainly of this so they can make a better educated decision, you know, and maybe save them from getting in this huge contract that maybe they didn't need. You know, maybe they had enough word of mouth that they would have done just fine and they wouldn't have had any benefit from it. You know what I mean? Like I was trying to look out for the community in that aspect. And I also said that Wedding Wire and The Knot really work best for the OG companies, the companies that have been around for seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years that have tons of reviews that have been on the wedding wire and the knot since 07 and 08, you know, that's where it works best. Obviously SCE is one of the top companies on the wedding wire and the knot as far as reviews and all that shit. Obviously we're going to get the awards. Obviously they're going to, we're going to keep a presence on there. Obviously we're going to like advertise on there. Like I'm not against that. You know what I mean? 
It has nothing to do with that. Me and Jana are good. Like, there's nothing wrong. Me and Jana are hanging out this Thursday. We're all going out for, like, you know what I mean? Like, everything's fine. There's no turmoil. He's just, and it's insane that this just comes out of nowhere. This grown man, this grown 50-something-year-old man finds a need to post something like this. And I'll tell you why he did it. I know why he did it. He did it because he owns Marquee Chicago Show. And he cannot stand, right? This guy cannot stand that the collective sells out every year at like a bajillion dollars a ticket and he can't get anybody to buy his tickets. That's got to be it because he starts it out talking about the collective and talking about how the collective, you know, advertises, takes advertising money or whatever, takes sponsor money from Wedding Pro. So in other words, because of what I said, now the DJ collective is taking dirty money or something. It's got to be because of that. I don't see another reason. This shit came out of nowhere and it's just so stupid. And I've done nothing but talk good about his show. I've, I've talked about the Marquee show before. I've done, I've done whole segments on my show about it. I even, I even literally, so if you've seen, I, I told a story about how I got kicked out of Mobile Beat years ago, right? Long story short, I basically, I got offered to speak at Mobile Beat, but I missed the call or the email or whatever. I don't know. For whatever reason, they offered me a spot and I missed it. And I was, and Jay and I was like the onstage uh, DJ at Mobile Beat, right? So when I missed it, I still wanted to go out there for Mobile Beat and I didn't know they asked me. So KC from Marquee, he did his first ever Marquee show. The first ever one he did, it was a remote show and he did it at the same time as Mobile Beat. Probably just stir shit. I don't know. But he did it the same time as Mobile Beat. He paid for me to come out to Vegas to speak at his show. So I go out there to speak at the show. And then when I go to Mobile Beat, they find out I'm speaking at the competing show and they're so pissed off that they kicked me out of Mobile Beat, right? And they gave me an option. They literally said, listen, like either you don't speak at the show or you can't come to Mobile Beat. They told me straight up, you know what I mean? Like ahead of time. And I said, no, I said, I already committed to KC. I'm not going to go back on my word. I told KC I would come speak. I could have canceled on KC like two months before the show and, and just never spoke for him and never went to Mobile Beat or went to Mobile Beat on my own. Like they offered me literally, uh, they said, we'll, we'll do a, a, a thing in our magazine about you, like Mobile Beat Magazine. We'll do, uh, like they offered me all this shit too. I was like, listen, I'm sorry. I had, I'm a man of my word. I gave KC my word. I'm going to go speak for his show and that's it. I don't know what to tell you. And I ended up getting dealt with a bunch of fucking bullshit over it. And then KC hits me up every year to come speak. I spoke at the other marquee show in Chicago multiple times. Last time I spoke, I cursed too much and he busted my balls and talked all this shit on me that I cursed too much during my presentation. And, and that was literally my last time I ever presented it in my life. And I'm like, I'm never going to do another seminar again. Like, you know, everyone bitches at me for cursing, whatever. Fuck it. I'm not going to do it. All right. I can curse on YouTube. I'm going to stick to YouTube and that's it. And I think that was the last thing I ever did. And I was like, whatever. And then he calls me, asks me to like, and I say, no, I'm, I'm retired from speaking, not speaking no more. And then this shit comes out of nowhere. Never said a bad, you know what I mean? I don't talk about people. I talk shit on products. I talk a lot of shit on my show, but like, I don't, I'm not going to like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's uncalled for. And you know, it just, it doesn't make any sense. So I don't know. I just want to speak on it and let you, I usually don't even address this sort of thing, but I just want to speak on it and let you know everything's good at SCE. Okay. There's no problems with SCE. I'm allowed to have my own opinion. All right. J Jason Jani is not a micromanaging type of, you know, like he's not, he's not like that. He's cool. He's laid back. He's not worried about it. Okay. We can have our own brands and our own opinions and that's it. And there's no shit to stir. Everything's fine. Okay. And for the record, when I spoke at the marquee show, it was stupid and it's like a $98 Uber ride to Chicago. So it's not even in Chicago. So, you know, there's that anyway. I'm always going to be honest. And I hate when people try and twist shit around. It's just annoying. Just because I was trying to help you guys. Like, you know what I mean? I care about you. I don't give a fuck about any of this background shady. Like, I don't care about anything. I, I will tell you the truth always, okay? Until I go missing. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you that, people. All right? I'm going to tell you the shit. I'm going to tell you the truth until I go missing. Fucking stupid, stupid, stupid. Anyway. Let's bring John on, people. Let's bring John on. I'm pumped to talk to him. There's lots to talk about. Blah. Get the sound effects ready. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for my man, John Gosling. 
What's up, bro? Can you hear me? Yep. A little delay, but it's cool. A little delay? Right. I just won't look at myself. <laughs> yeah. What's up, man? How you feeling? Thanks for coming on. Oh, I'm nervous. I wasn't nervous yeah, for right. like Oprah or anything. Now I'm nervous for you. Yeah, you're nervous for my show. Exactly. You're, you're not nervous for Entertainment Weekly. You're bugging. Yeah. I, so, like, you have a crazy story, and I kind of want to get through it. Because uh, it's like, it's, it's so interesting to me. It's like, first of all, how did everything, like, start? You know what I mean? Like, did you, like, like, like how, how did that show even start? You know, like, it started as, like, a documentary, right? But, like, how did that even happen? Did you just run into somebody in, like, in, like, Walmart? Like, you know what I mean? Like, was it just random or, like? Oh, uh, so in 2006, we filmed a one-hour documentary. I have twins and sex tuplets, so I have twin girls. Yeah. Um, that were born in 2000. And then I have sex tuplets that were born in 2004 three boys, three girls. And uh, I guess we're in the news a lot. And uh, I'm sitting at work. I worked for the governor's office at the time in Harrisburg. My ex-wife now uh, called me and she was like, oh, they this production company wants to film a reality show. And I was like, what the fuck's a reality show? Like, I know I don't have time to watch TV. So I was like, uh, well, how much does it pay? And then like, she told me and all this stuff. And I was like, all right, let's just do it. Let's show the world what it's really like to have, well, at that time, they were 15 months old, six 15-month-old kids. And then Jesus. my twins were, my twins were like four at the time. And That's I was living great. in E-Town, so it, it was crazy. So they how'd filmed you, how'd like... How'd you get the documentary? Uh, how'd you get the documentary uh, in the first place? Like, how'd that happen? Well, the production company that we used the entire show and Johnny Cape and everything... Uh, reached out to Kate directly uh, and they just like emailed her and then she called back and then this was originally Discovery Health yeah so uh, now Oprah owns that network she bought it for like two billion dollars um, we did one hour documentary one year the next year we did the follow-up they were the highest rated documentaries ever and then um, about 2000 end of 2006 2007 they're like we want to film a reality show and yeah. that's kind of when it all changed so we were on discovery health for two seasons and then we switched to tlc but it's all the same network yeah it's discover the parent company's discovery so gotcha. discovery just went to TLC. TLC. yeah was it like uh like, did it get old having cameras everywhere? Did you have, like, a filming schedule? Like, how does that even work? You know what I mean? It's insane. Plus, like, raising eight kids. Like, I have one kid. He's an animal. I don't know what to do with him. And, like, I can't imagine, like, raising all those kids and then, like, having cameras everywhere and, like, I don't know. And then well, Kate. at first we had one At first we had one camera crew. So, you know, they would we'd have set days and scheduled through, you know, months at a time. So, like, in six months we might only film 12 times. Uh, gotcha. In the first uh, one, two, and three seasons, uh, by season end of season three, we're, we I guess we filmed forty episodes in season three and fifty two episodes in season four. But like in the beginning, I got in trouble a lot. I'd stare at the camera. There's no way you can't if you're a normal person. I'd always be like, and, and they tell you not to look at they it. Right? Were, they would yell, be they like, yell at you. Yeah, yeah. Not like don't look at the camera. Don't look at the camera. And you're like. <laughs> in your face, you gotta like, yeah, no way you, um, like, okay, so your whole life you're told to look at the camera and smile. Yeah. But now, like, your whole, like, growing up, and uh, now you're not to look at the camera. And I'm like, and the, and the fuzzy boom mic. And you're like, yeah. They, like, they, I have, they're, they're, like, there's yeah, just one dude holding it, just like this. Just... Yeah, you're like, <laughs> looking all over the place. I had to do, like, can you walk through the door again? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe. That's it was crazy. weird. That's but crazy. But then, then like, as, as, as developed, uh, you kind of become friends. You, like, eat, live, sleep with your crew and travel with them. And they just become kind of part of the extended family. So then gotcha. it's you just kind of get used to them being there and how they react to certain things. Because it, it kind of like DJing, you're reacting to the crowd and feeding off that energy. It's yeah. the same as filming. You're like, oh, was that funny? Because I thought it was funny. Now their crew's laughing. So now, you know, you're like a comedian up there. And uh, I don't know. I just got kind of comfortable with it. But 
at one point we had two or three camera crews because the kids became super super mobile. So like the boys would go over here and the girls would go over here and the twins would go to their room. I'd be over here, you know, I had like a farm mat, so I'd be working on the farm mat and there's a lot of stuff going on. And they just need a lot of B-roll and they're all over the place. So, yeah. So it, it became a huge production. Did, did they ever coach you guys? Like what the, like anything like, anything like, like, uh, like trying to make it like funnier or like, did they ever, like, was there any coaching involved or was really just like, they just turn on the cameras, you guys just did whatever? Uh, with the kids, they just, the kids did whatever they wanted to. With us, because we narrated our own show. I mean, I got in trouble a lot with, with my ex-wife because, uh, you know, the producer would be like, did you know you said that about your ex-wife? I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> oh, because anything you said in there. Yeah, and so they, they would like literally call you out. But yeah, we got it on camera. Yes. You were actually just saying that. <laughs> they would be like, John, can you tell us about the time you said this? And what did you mean by it? And you're sitting next to your partner at the time. Beautiful. And like perfect shit, shit storm. Yeah, but that drew, drew ratings because yeah. then, you know, they'd be fighting and yeah, it's, it's you poor guy. That's it a shame. I, I'll never forget the so legendary young. clip, the fucking neg- legendary clip where uh, she, she yelled at you for breathing and you're like, I'm breathing. Oh, yeah, that's I'm just trying. That's to trending right now. Yeah, it's the like trend, it brought up trending, again. I don't know why it's trending again. I'm, it's like 13 years ago. But uh, yeah. yeah, sorry yeah. for breathing. <laughs> Like, that, that was that. That was actually in my divorce cre- decree. Attempted murder. He told me not to stop breathing. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. "Your Honor, it's premeditated." <laughs> premeditated. She thought breathe. about it. Told me not to breathe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she announced it to the world. Did I, like I fought that death. Everyone, uh, everyone was definitely on your side, but I'm sure you know that uh, as far as like uh, when you guys did. The I didn't know that. I didn't know anything. No. I literally went to work. I came home. I did kids. I went to work. I came home. I did kids for like three seasons. Yeah. Which is technically now it's different, but technically three years all I did. And then by the fourth middle of fourth season, my employer, the governor of Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. <laughs> was like, hey, you know. You're filming a lot. Maybe, you know, just take time off of work and just go do that. And I was already under contract. So I was yeah. like, oh, okay, bye. I was making, you know, good money. So then I pieced. Yeah. But then it didn't be, it wasn't so real then. So I started contemplating these things in my head. Like, oh, I don't have a job anymore. So how am I relatable? Um, you know, yeah. how are we relatable as a family of 10 just traveling around the world and on, you know, uh, these giant vacations and stuff that no one in their right mind will do with a kids. And it it became like a commercial and, you know, then I was heading towards like, I don't want to do this anymore. But the the ratings kept going up like season five, you guys, uh, you guys were averaging like 10 million views or some shit like that. You guys like the number one show. Like, uh, it was, it's nominated for an Emmy. Yeah. We had a lot of stuff going on. Was it, because I stopped watching after, like, you, you know, you guys kind of broke up and, like, you know, it just it turned into mm-hmm. K plus eight. You know, that's when I, like, I pieced from the show personally, like, w- back in the day when I watched it. But, like, was it tough, like, going through all that, like, with the cameras? Because, like, they made, like, a whole, like, it was a spectacle. You know what I mean? Like, oh, obviously, that was, like, like the, a whole. I think that's how people recognize me now. Oh, you on your wife, which I did not. Um, they created, like, this whole tabloid genre. They put a yeah. gag order on me. Um, because they had to figure out like what, how they were going to move on. Um, because I was just like, I pieced out. Like I didn't want to film anymore and I just wanted to quit my job, but that doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you know, behind the scenes, our marriage was like on the rocks already. Um, uh, we were already separated We're I'm living in New York and coming home every week and going different places and I'm looking for management, you know, and all this stuff. You know, meanwhile, TLC is just like, ah, oh, he, he's wayward and creating all this negative drama and stuff, you know, and I had two lawsuits. I had my divorce going on and then I have TLC suing me for quitting and, um, it, it was like just a breach like of a contract nightmare. kind of thing. Oh, huge breach of contract. Yeah. Huge. Like I had stacks of paperwork and they deposed all my friends, you know, <sighs> and how did I make money and all sorts because, you know, I. By quitting, I really stuck it to him, not thinking like, 
oh, uh, well, I just don't want to work anymore. You guys can keep filming. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it just, it, it just, they didn't, Discovery's a tough, tough, tough company to ever be under contract with. I mean, looking back, do you like regret quitting? Absolutely not. Probably the best thing I ever did. It kind of, there's two parts to it. I saved my divorce from being filmed, which would probably still, that would probably be season six. Yeah. Of John and K plus eight, not K plus eight. And um, it separated my brand. So instead of being John from John and K plus eight, Jocelyn, and then it created this whole other separate brand and what I could do with it, you know? Yeah. So then that moves into like music and, and doing those kind of things. And then you started DJing. You said like, because we were talking earlier, like, like nine years ago you started DJing, you said? Yeah, like two th- end of 2013, uh, 2014. And, yeah, so just, I did just a couple things. It was yeah. interesting. And like, like, because our, so, and, then, <laughs> and we haven't talked about this yet, but like, all right, so when you started DJing, right, 2013, 2014, it makes perfect sense because I was in Harrisburg, right? I was DJing in Harrisburg a lot at the time, right? I got like my first little club yeah. residency. I was like 25, right? I would go and, to... And, in really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I probably yeah. saw you DJ. Probably. I was all over Second Street back then, right? And oh, yeah. um and uh and I remember you becoming a DJ because then there was rumblings all around the, like all amongst the DJs everywhere. You know, there's rumblings like, yo, your fucking John Goslin became a DJ and da 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 like you know, like was there like like what was it like, you know, kind of jumping into the world? Because like DJs can be savages, you know what I mean? And like I feel like you know, there might have been like a little blowback <laughs> because like DJs, uh, you know, they're um, they, they, they definitely, you know, reality TV star star like they did it to Paulie D. They did it to Paris Hilton. They did it to uh, any other reality TV star that became a DJ. You know what I mean? And like, ha- like, what was that like? It was horrible at first uh, because I just wanted to play music. and yeah. But I thought about it as a, a way to provide. And I was working two jobs and DJing and all this stuff, but I thought uh, it, it was a good outlet. I didn't have an outlet. And I, I, I stayed in the public for a long time. And then I come out like doing club appearances and then DJing. But I started off in bars and all that stuff. But um, when I heard the rumblings uh, through social media, I'm like, oh, God, I better not mess up. So all I did for all is practice every single day. You know, I had an NS7 at that time, and yeah. everyone made fun of me because I was on a now look just saying <laughs> everybody's on controllers now <laughs> yeah now it's like because we're all old we don't carry shit around you know this shit's heavy carrying exactly. my techs everywhere it's like 50 yeah. pounds um so um no it was just very i would not go in the philly market the club appearances that my agent would book me like or just show up and drink with people but i would yeah. never dj in the philly market Cause I, I like knew who you all were and like all my friends now, but I was like, how am I going to compete with this? And like, it, I don't want to embarrass myself because it'll be bad press. I messed yeah. up or like nine just posted on his Insta. Like he messed up. Like we all do that. My belly hit the stop button. Shit happens. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you're like scrambling real quick. I did not want that to happen back then because. I wouldn't be a DJ anymore. It'd, it'd be such catastrophic bad press. Yeah, you get a microscope to show up on and you. take a picture. Yeah, exactly. I can't mess up. Like I literally have to be perfect every single time. I can never cancel a gig. I can. I. It has to be absolutely perfect because the press will just eat me up. Someone take a picture and then I'm game over. So all I did That's was it. it was really it was stressful for me. Now it's like you know I just go play and oh format and do my thing. But then it was like. I probably gave myself anxiety, strict anxiety. I don't know why yeah. I did that to myself, but whatever. I, I, I just like making people happy. And my gigs are more, it's more of an appearance and music. Yeah. I take a lot of pictures. Yeah. A lot. But it's because it's when I realized how that was happening, and then as I started DJing more, I, and, you know, I, you know, I, became a resident at Building 24. I worked with DJ Image and all this stuff was going on. And then I started meeting Philly DJs and they're, oh, you're not an asshole. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> and uh, 
you know, all that kind of stuff happened. I started like learning from them and then I'm like, oh, I have an idea. Well, why don't we partner together and I'll just make you more money. So that's how it hmm. kind of happened. It came in a business sense. I can do an appearance and uh, someone opens for me. I play in the middle and someone closes and it becomes a production and just like TV. And, uh, and then now the club pays significantly yeah. more money. You say, this is my opening guy. You have to have him with me. And then like, and then Correct. now you guys can negotiate a higher rate. Right. And then, you know, that DJ is going to make more money opening than he's ever made. You know. Ever. Yeah. Just because. Yeah. But it's social media presence and marketability and SEO and everything that like you're doing now. And like, that's what, yeah. oh, I like this Nick dude. We're on the same, we're on the same page here. Yeah. It's like a business thing. I mean, you, I'm, I respect a lot of, there's stuff DJs do that I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. I can try, but you know, am I going to get paid more to do that? Probably not. Yeah. And you know, I, I really relate to you because like I, um, I'm like, I, I am and you know, always was a primarily like a wedding DJ. So like, I'm you know, I, most club DJs didn't fuck with me at all like uh in the beginning as well like when i tried to get in the clubs or i tried to like they're just like a wedding guy and i i was also under a microscope i felt like because if i mess up it's like yeah see he played the ymca i knew it he's a wedding dj yeah. such a wedding DJ. you know what i mean funny. and like yeah. i was so stressed out you know like because i had to be so good and like i had to prove myself you know like you know wedding djs can throw down too but then eventually i just leaned into it and I decided just to, you know what? I am going to play YMCA every club gig. I'll show them. And I'm going to post on my story. Like, look, I'm, up, I'm out here playing wedding DJ sets, bitch. Like, you know what I mean? And just, like, kind of leaned into it. And, you know, and that's it. You know, you just got to just, like, not overthink I, the whole thing, I, you know? Yeah, I think I think, in, when you internalize things and, and you group yourself as a wedding DJ only because people, you think people see you as a wedding DJ. But when you see yourself as an individual first that happens to play music at weddings and that's your business. And then you do, you happen to play at this club and that club. Well, you're just a DJ, but you're Nick Spinelli and I'm John Gosselin and you know, you got Jay Ski and you got nine and Soho and Casper and you know, Jason yeah. Wise and all these people, you know, and then you look, Oh, they're a father too. So they're providing for their family. They're doing what they want. It's not a job. It's a career. Because you're loving it, and uh, yeah, it once sense. you start internalizing, I'm older now. See, I'm ten years older than you. So, <laughs> yeah, like, sense. I think, like, when I was your age, I had paparazzi. Now I don't, and you know, there's things have calmed down. But I can, I can see the bigger picture because I'm not trapped inside the bubble. I mean, there is a lot of hate in the industry. I don't know why. I'm yeah. better than you, and why is he playing here? And who do you well, know? Egos. And, there's a lot of egos. Yeah, it's, it's all like, our job is going to have a lot of. You know what I mean? takes a certain yeah, amount just, of ego i feel like i just laugh i'm just like eh. you know i got i got almost six 19 year olds everyone's got an ego all right <laughs> they know it all my son just called me he's like you pay that dermatology bill i'm like i'm getting to it okay i got <laughs> things going i got an interview i will get my hsa card out and pay that bill <laughs> like he's telling me what to pay i'm like go fuck yourself come on I'm like this is crazy when 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 your uh, when your six tuplets uh, turned eighteen, was it like where you're like yes? Like was it like did you? Did oh you, yeah, I was you, like, did you, did you have here's a shot? Your trust like, fund here. Yeah. Oh, the trust fund was. I called that <laughs> dude three months before it happened. I'm like, how do we transfer this? Oh, yeah. well, you got to get a wealth investment person. I'm like, I just call up my boy. I'm like, yo, my daughter wants her, you to be her wealth investment, and I'm just moving the money. And then it's just like they had to go to class. We had to teach them about goobers of money and how to handle that's smart that. though yeah, yeah yeah so they they had they meet with them uh, every month and here you know here's your investment because they just got one big making. lump sum yeah they just well, got one bam in their account when they turn 18 from the show like essentially yeah, right here you go you're a senior in high school you're rich now <sighs> yeah because i can uh, if i got that's a lump a sum uh, like that and in, 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 when i was 18 i probably would have died so I wouldn't have. Uh, I would have bought a Corvette well, boys, Cash boys are and different. I would have crashed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 155 well, that, miles an my, hour. <laughs> yeah, my son. I call my son NASCAR because this is his fourth car now. So, uh, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's interesting. My daughter's I very conservative. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I only Hannah and Colin live with me, and Colin kind of lives on his own, and yeah. then um, 
Hannah, I mean, she's almost like, I never really see her. She's a boyfriend and all that stuff. And then I'm like free right now. And then my other four live in North Carolina with their mother. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my twins, uh, one goes to Syracuse, one goes to Fordham. And they, so my twins graduate college this year and my six graduate high school this year. So, crazy. That's insane, so like, man. I was a young parent. You know, I was now you're free. 20. Yeah, I was uh, 22 when I got married and 23 when I had twins and 27 when I had sex tuplets. Why do you think like you like had twins and then uh, six tuplets? Like what, what, what isn't that like an astronomical? Like, how does that happen? Like, do you know what I mean? Did the doctor ever tell uh, you like, do you have like you the go craziest in a room, sperm on you earth? You go in a room with a little cup. If there's nothing romantic about it. <laughs> like, did, there you is no testing your sperm? No romance. Dude, your sperm's got to be like, it's got to like, like it melt metal. Like. Carry it around. And then when you're 28, you go to the urologist and you get fixed. Yeah. Period. Period. I saw a mixologist. I was like chiming in on that shit. I was like, just go, dude. It'll be the best thing you ever Because <laughs> Dave went and got snubbed. And I was like, hey. Good how, job. How is getting snipped? Does it hurt or anything? Because no. I'm, I'm going to probably do it soon. No, it's, this is 2023. Right, right. He ain't so going in there with like nice freaking pliers. Yeah. I don't come out with like elephant balls, you know, like for like a week. No. I can't I like, mean, put pants on. You've seen those pharmaceutical commercials. They're rare side effects, you know, but yeah. Oh, yeah, very rare. For the Every most. Once in a while. <laughs> yeah, for the most part, we're good. Very rare occurrence of elephantitis. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen this. stuff. On. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. But. <laughs> <laughs> but, so like so you started DJing right and it was kind of like stressful but what, what would you say like was a turning point when like kind of like you got comfy not only DJing but just like just being a part of the community you know what I mean like what like, what, what was the turning point so there's a couple of instances I mean I got booked at Harris Pool like shit okay. in my pants brought a dude with me um, okay. met Eddie club. Um, sold it out Everyone was happy. Frank, everyone made a shit ton of money, you know. Yeah. Um, it was a uh, week after Memorial Day, like 2015, maybe. Okay. And then I was like, oh, maybe I can continue to do this. <laughs> you know, I got a little confidence. But it's like bangers. You're playing bangers, you know. Yeah. At, like, at that point yeah. in my life, yeah, I was just like, go up there and slam it. Yeah. You know, you're not going to take requests. It's the club. No one gives requests mm-hmm. in the club. And then... And we got really good reviews from that. And then, you know, I started working at Billing 24. I was the lounge DJ. I didn't really work okay. in the club. Okay. And this became my niche because I could, it's my hometown. So I could talk to people and people are coming in and playing music. You know, they're mm-hmm. throwing requests out. And I'm like, you know, I know a lot of people don't take requests, but I'm like, I, I just put that in my prepare. Yeah. If I'm going to use it, I'll use it. If I, do, I use Serato, by the way. Um, yeah. And I just throw it in there and then. I could listen to it and be like, oh, that's going to fit where I'm going. Because I play to an older crowd. I, probably 28 all the way to like 54 in the gotcha. lounge. Because it's like high end. There's, you know, um, you know, stop shelf crap going in there. But mm-hmm. then, you know, Image or Vinny, he's in the club, small dome, banging he, out all. Beast. Yeah, he does. Too. I don't know. Everybody, everybody <laughs> sleeps on Vinny, like, man. You he can't get up there. Face off. Yeah, that you can't can get cut, up there. And, like, you, what are you going to do? Nothing. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, he plays in the club. Yeah. But then, you know, Vinny started traveling a lot. You know, you go to AC and he's going here. And then, so he's booking like Aiden, Scott, uh, Herc was playing in there, Dobrowska. Okay. Like all these people are from Philly are now coming to my hometown. So I feel like I'm the Mater D. I got to like, Vinny's here, not here, so I got to take care of these people. You know, I'm like, I think the first time Aiden came, I'm like, I just ran in there with a shot. You want a shot? He's playing video DJing. He's like, who the fuck is this? And I hand yeah. him a shot. And then we kind of just, it kind of like broke the ice. Because I'm sure he had preconceived ideas of who I was. I mean, I already knew who he was. Yeah. But we never really talked. Because it was like, passe maybe. Yeah. And then, um, then he just started playing a lot more. And then he invites me to this Christmas party for DJs. All the DJs, all the Philly DJs that I don't even want to upset, and I'm just like shitting in my pants. But I went, so I bring, I'm Asian, I'm Korean, so I bring a huge thing of Hawaiian fried rice. My mom's from Hawaii, my dad's from Philly. Okay. My parents met in, my parents met in medical school at Temple. So 
I'm like, oh, I can, I can, I'm from Reading. That's rougher than Philly. So I come with. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, if you can survive here, you can survive anyway. So yeah. anyway, uh, I go with this giant thing of fried rice. And because my mom always says bring something. And a half uh-huh. gallon of fireball. Okay. So I'm like, I walk into this show. party. Oh, it's everybody. Like Soho, Casper, people like. Oh, yeah. I work here, I, you know, and oh, I, I'm the headliner for here. I'm like, okay, I don't even know where that is, but I'll check it out. You know, stuff like that. And I'm just kind of like, don't beat me up. Don't beat me up. Like when I get to the door, I'm like, I thought this I was like, set I'm going to get my ass beat. I'm going to get my ass beat. Yeah. They're going to beat up this dude, kick me to the curb and like call their boys and drag me around the streets. These are things that go through my head constantly. So yeah. <laughs> just because I play music. Um, so no, it was good. I met all these people, we drank a lot. I don't think I got home at like six in the morning or something like that, but that it kind of broke the ice. Cause so then I got a call from like Anthony Soho, sent a DJ. So he's like, Oh, you should come hang out with us and stuff. You know? And I was like, where? <laughs> and that's where you started hanging the Senate guys yeah. and everything. Yeah. That's when I ended up at like, uh, uh, dusk. And going to Adelphia and all these places that y'all play at. Yeah. And then, um, then I just started making friends with people. And I think they noticed, like, every girl in the world's taking a picture with me, including their mom and grandmother. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> the worst is, like, this banging girl comes up to you. She's like, can I get your picture? I'm like, sure. Oh, my mom's going to love this. I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's good. Send it to my mom right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you mind if we FaceTime my mom? I'm like, uh, I don't care. I guess. You know, and, and it just became, but then I started thinking like, how cool would it be if like I had mom, daughter, grandmother, all in my gig. So I yeah. started marketing it that way in the SEO. Like when I push out, when I push out an ad or a flyer to that whole demographic, women yeah. from this age to this age. And then it just became like this huge thing. And then I started getting all these bookings because I was just isolating that demographic. And then you could play super open format because you have such a wide array. You know what I mean? So like, that's a lot of fun too. Like that would be a super fun gig. I think when people come to my gigs to like, they don't know what I'm going to play. Well, I think they come to see if I fuck up and then I don't. Mm -hmm. And then I crush it. And my transitions are like, I think they're perfect. Like, there's people that are like, ah, where the fuck did you learn this shit? I'm like, I'm Asian, bro. I'm in tech. I know how this shit works. <laughs> and then, then they see me take pictures, and I put on, like, a mix so I can take pictures because I, I don't l- really play with anyone anymore. And yeah. then, you know, I'm trying to manage all the stuff. And I'm on the microphone and kind of making fun of people satirically, but they don't know it because whatever, you know. And it's like a whole thing. And then, you know, I'll play a range, like, I play music from the 50s, because my parents were on American Bandstand. They danced on American Bandstand in Philadelphia. So I'm like, no, uh, I grew up, I grew up like Dick Clark and Motown and yeah. all this stuff, and I'm pulling shit out of my ass. Like, my crates are, so one of my buddies looked at my hands and said, what the fuck is all this shit? I'm like, just hit play. You like the beat. Like, I go for funk and shit like that. So yeah. I make sure all the beats are, like, jiving. I and then um shit. I gotta see this shit. It's crazy because there's like a, it's like a rotation of, and then I play college. Like I go to, like I play a Capitol Bar and Grill in Bloomsburg and just like 300 people show up and just, Jamal was just there. He texted me last night. He's like, what's up with you and Nick in the show? I'm like, I don't know, bro. Just chime in and listen. He's probably listening right now. He's going to comment. So shit, it's like, Jamal. right. Jamal Knight, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's just, you know. Meeting people, networking, but like, I take stuff from your gig, Jamal's gig, Soho's gig, Casper's gig. I go to Wreck and Royal. You know, I go to all these places, and I'm like, oh, I like those two transitions together, and I just like write, put in my notes, I'm like, oh, I can do that. I think. Well, he scratches into it, but I don't really scratch that much, so I'm gonna do it this way. And then I just listen for the music, and I, you know, I, I'm in IT. I just. I mean, I look well, like and, I'm sitting in my, my grandmother's closet right now, but. And get, getting office. a late, getting a late start though. Like, so is that kind of like, would you say it's like the biggest way you kind of like 
got ahead of the ball and learned how to DJ and like really got like fluent with it is like just going out a lot and listening to other DJs and just like, you know, writing down like kind of like, you know, they played the songs. Like, oh, it's a good song to play. And like just building your crates that way. Like, was that the, probably the best? Um, yeah, I think listening to other people. I mean, I grew up in the 90s. I was born in 77. So I mm-hmm. was like, I graduated in 95. There's a lot of shit that happened in 94, 95. Like music, musically. The biggie era. Hip hop. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. huge. And like y'all were young. We were like, we were in the oh, hood. Six. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- I worked at Mariground. I sold Jenko jeans. That was a big thing. You know, like I Jenko was. Jenko jeans. Yeah. No. Jenko jeans. <laughs> Those big like, ass. Wide. I worked at the mall when you could smoke cigarettes. <laughs> you know, like no one cared. Um, yeah. You know, I grew up that way, you know, and like. Like, I identify, like, with Casper and stuff like that because we're, like, the same age. Um, you know, we work, we work well together. But um, I just kind of combined it all in my head. And it, it, like, orchestrates. You know, you walk around the day and you have an idea. You're like, oh, that's a good idea. I yeah, just write every just single thing like down. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I'm like, well, where's everyone? Like, in the beginning, I'm like, where's everyone download their music? And then yeah. I learned about, like, record pools, pools and, and all this stuff. And I just sit around on my laptop. Like, I fly everywhere. I go a lot of places for other stuff. And I would just go on the crate and be like, oh, I like that beat. Save. I like that beat. Save. Spanish music. Oh, I like that beat. I don't speak Spanish. But I like that beat, you know, and I just yeah. save it and go to different pools. And and, and my area is very conservative music-wise. Lancaster is yeah. way more bohemian. It's only 20 miles down the road. But they're going to expect a lot more from their DJing than where I am. It's crazy we can get away with in Lancaster. Yeah. Like I'm only DJ there a handful of times, and it's like you could play like the most like like the even the younger kids know a lot of the older stuff, and that's just like oh, not the case yeah, in most crazy. places. You know, I think in Bloomsburg the biggest song I played was "I Will Survive." I recorded it, but it was an EDM remix mashup, blah blah. Yeah, yeah. and they're all singing it. Like I'm like I did not expect that. I was using it as transition, but I'm gonna let this shit ride out because they're singing. You know what I mean? Hey. They're like you, you're getting the flow. And it's always a risk. That's the toughest part about like DJ. Like uh, for me, when I DJ like college crowds and stuff, is like I always I have to take a lot of risk and figure out which older songs they know. Like every year, it changes a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, and it's so random. You can know ahead of time a little bit if like a song trends on TikTok or something like that, like an older song. But like generally speaking, you know, like I have all like I go through my wedding crates and I try every once in a while I'll plug an older song, you know, from the '90s or '80s or even '70s. Right. And it's like, and it's like it's random, but like every sometimes it cr- crash and burns and they just look at me like, "What the fuck is this?" I'm like, "Okay, next one," and then I have like something yeah, ready. And then that. the other times you get that reaction and you kind of like take a mental note, like well, "I will survive" is one of them. YMCA they know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what, what, uh, September they know I can, I'll play yep. September in the middle of a set and even and like bop. I couldn't imagine like I heard you know when Be Faithful came out by Fat Man Scoop mm-hmm. that was the shit like in like 93 or whatever and it Brooklyn was like Klan. all that stuff and you can still play it today they yeah. weren't even a twinkle in their father's eye at that time and so they're just you know a, they're they don't know who the artist the is but they know the song it's crazy yeah. Like you're like, uh, okay. They they know that voice, the that crazy voice. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, like they they just yeah. know what's gonna happen. Bass drop, and that's it. Game over. Batman scoop, Crook clan. Yeah. I always wanted that drop. But my like, whole life. ever since I heard AM. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So like, I pretty much take everything from Jersey and Philly, and I go to LA a lot, and I go to Miami, and I travel, and I do the stuff with my daughter, and. And, like, I'm in clubs that I probably don't belong in and because I'm, like, 40, I'll be 46 on Saturday. And, like, and I'm just, like, oh, I'm at live. Oh, okay. And then I just suck it all in and, like, oh, I, I like this, though. I, like, you know when it's bad and you know when it's good. It, you just got to enjoy it, man. Live in the moment. That's one thing I really like. I, every time I do a club, I'm a wedding, anything, I'm just thinking, I'm like, man, I don't know, like, if I'm ever going to be at this club again or if I'm ever going to have a exactly. crowd like this again. Like, I just soak it in. I just, ah, yep. <laughs> just grin. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's, like, Which, and, there, you know, and, and I just think there's a lot, like, with me, I have a lot going on. I have, like, the company and branding and I have a job and all this stuff, but it's, like, yeah. I kind of be, like, you know, there's the money, but then there's the environment, you know, and if you can capture that, like you do, you film your environment and then you use that later or you can use it for marketing yeah. or whatever like that. I think media content is so important. I mean, 100%. I started TV 
and there was like Twitter. We didn't have Instagram. Mm-hmm. You know, there was Facebook, um, and it just became public. So I came up through social media. I don't know what generation it's called, but whatever. That we're learning about social media. Yeah. And we're using it more. I mean, in high school, I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have a cell phone until I was like 22 years old. Well, yeah, because you, cause, yeah, cause you I had a pager. We had pagers. <laughs> and I had a beeper. Cell, phone, cell phones were like this big back then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> I had a beeper, and I knew where every payphone in the whole community was. Just in case can, I had can, a call. Can, can I ask you a random question? Sure. All, all you celebrities, right? Why, why, how, how, how in the fuck do you guys get your teeth so white? How does that happen? Because in real life, too, you guys all have the, the whitest teeth ever. And every time I, like, meet someone like that, they always have the whitest teeth. And I just, I'm, I'm insecure to smile. Like, is that something they do? Like, when you get, like, when you get the show and everything, do they, like, all right, we're going to give you a stylist. We're going to dress you. We're going to, like, we're going to whiten your teeth. Or is it just, like, did you guys just have crazy white teeth? Uh, my dad was a dentist. So. Oh. Yeah, I my well, dad was a children's dentist. I can't. Oh no, you have to go to uh, get you got to get Zoom done. You got to go to a cosmetic dentist. Zoom? What's Zoom? I'm gonna write this shit down. I swear Zoom is like they wipe. You, you guys gonna see teeth. me on the next show? It's, it's gonna be ridiculous. You gotta see Joe Coy's episode about his teeth. It's funny. Joe Joe Coy. Oh yeah, he's another one with yeah, yeah. crazy white teeth. Yeah, yeah. He talks about it though. It's funny. So it's like a UV thing. Oh, is that where they put the gel on your thing and then they put the yeah, and they, blue mm, light? Yeah. And then they. Yeah. I mean, they have all that stuff on Facebook and stuff, but it doesn't really work. No. They actually match match your caps and all that shit. <laughs> I just always wonder, like, how the hell yeah. they have the fucking uh, whitest teeth. I also drink yeah. tons of coffee and smoke joints all day, so it doesn't help. Well, see? There you go. Yeah, I'm not a big it is. smoker, but. No, I learned about that. Uh, nah, I did some edibles once, and I tried to play video. I play video games a lot, and uh, yeah, my team yelled at me because my coordination was way off. There was I like, mean, I, there was a delay. A other, <laughs> the edibles are completely like, different than smoking it. It's a whole yeah. other world. And then I just yeah. wanted to go away. Yeah, I want like see drinking's different. Like I can drink and then stop, and then the buzz goes away, and then I get hungry, yeah. and then I can drink again. <laughs> and then the True. buzz comes back. Weed is like it's more controlled. Yeah, yeah, and I don't like being out of control. I start sweating, not because of the weed, but because now I don't want to be high anymore. Gotcha. And then how do you get out of it? There's no like getting out of it. You're in there for the long haul. Yeah, uh, there is one way. Um, what, what's it called? Uh, CBD is the uh, is the opposite of weed. So they say if like you're having like a crazy trip, if you took too many edibles. Uh, or like, let's say someone ate edibles by accident. Like the miracle cure is to like give them CBD somehow, and it's supposed to like counteract it, apparently. But beyond that, yeah, you're, you're I'm in not, for long. I'm not no edibles. lab rat. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not testing that. So I just people are like, <laughs> See, I'm oh. not testing that theory. <laughs> yeah, hell no. People in my college are like, try my vape pen. I'm like, first of all, your lips have been on that. Second of all, no. Yeah. Third of all, your like DJing high is stupid. <laughs> I feel like I'm it's, like time lapsing through my crates. Like mm. the waveforms are going by so slow. <laughs> Just, it's like chatter, <laughs> chatter. Is something wrong? I'm like checking my settings. You know, five milliseconds is right. Buffer's good. No, I'm, I'm fucked up. Yeah. The worst yeah, is like, I've been to your gig and I got shit faced on Jameson. I'm like, I spent $400 on a bottle. I'm going to drink the whole bottle. Oh, I forgot that about bad. that. Yeah, you came got, out. Yeah. Shout I didn't get thrown out. I, got, I threw up. Yeah. You threw up that night? You yeah, were, yeah. You were ripping. I remember I was, I was DJing. Glittery. You came in the booth and you were like, let's fucking go. I was like, holy That's like, shit. <laughs> so my, my alter ego is Joan. She just comes out. Joan. And then Joan. Just like, <laughs> I'm fucking. I woke up in, at my hotel. I was like, how did I get here? I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Oh my <laughs> God, I offended Nick. Oh my God. It was so bad. <laughs> My Hell girlfriend's yeah. like, li- she. My girlfriend's like lying to me, telling me I did all this shit, and then I call Casper to verify, he's, and he's just truthful. He's like, "You were fucked up, but you didn't do any of that." And I'm like, "Screw you!" No, you're I'm just having a good so time. Guilty. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. No, nah, no, nah, you're you're just having a good yeah. time. You texted me that day. Yeah, you were just having a good time. It was funny. So that was, I it was brutal. Thing. I I go all I did out that now. With, I did that with Four Color Zach. I, w- I went and saw Four Color Zach at HQ, and I got too drunk, 
like because I was just having so much fun and like he was like killing it and I was just I was pouring my own drinks I was in the booth I was yeah, pouring my own worst. drinks and then next thing I know I woke up in my car like just in the parking garage I was like oh god what did I do <laughs> what did I did do I, I did I park so here I or did I drive here yet. and park here yeah oh no 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 yeah it was like, definitely where I parked yeah. like I didn't drive I, I at least I knew better not to drive of course but like yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, like, and that was like, I was like hanging out with four colors act before and like, then I ended up getting too drunk and I'm like, man, I haven't talked to him since. And it's just like, <sighs> I was like, I probably, I know, but like, he's like one of my he... favorite DJs. I was like, I just ruined it. Yeah. I ruined it. He'll never, but then you think about like when you, friend de- now. <laughs> yeah, but you think about when you DJ, you don't give a fuck what's going on. You're just trying to hammer that shit. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like it's sometimes True. you're so in the zone. So I don't even know. Did, didn't like, notice me acting a fool behind him. <laughs> Yeah, my girl would be like, yo, there was, I filmed this, and I saw this, and did you see that? And this girl couldn't walk, and, like, she does the breakdown analogy of everything that happened in that room that night. And I'm like, I go back through my history. Oh, my God, I played that song? I didn't even know I played that. You know, it's kind of like, you're just like. You're you're running on second-level intuition. Right, but I have to learn to smile more. So it's just like my PR comes in, because my PR manager is always like, you got to smile more when you're DJing. Because I'm like, so what does a PR manager do, by the way? Yeah, these are all, these are, yeah, the, the, yeah. I always wonder how all this stuff works. So, like, how does this stuff work? So I have booking people, just like, if you would book me, I would call you a booking person, you know, or you would and, go and out and they and basically random. take a cut. They, they connect the yeah. dots. They say, hey, we have John Goslin. It'll be this much money and we can book him for you. And then like they book you and they take a cut. So like yeah. an agency kind of thing. Yeah. So a booking manager or a booking person would probably call my PR person to to garner net value, like what am I worth? And the PR person would be like, well, you know, if he's booked at Harris, I'll put you in People Magazine, I'll put your club in In Touch, I have connections with Daily Mail, and you know, we can do an article. So the PR person knows all the media people. She knows every media person, and like we're assigned media people, Uh and then it becomes more of a campaign. Oh, he's gonna play here, and then you have to do an interview with this person, this person, this person, this person. You know, and then they're just going to plug the shit out of the brand, me, the club, everyone involved and all that stuff. And the, the outreach will be astronomical. So How the, PR, the PR, person, PR person get paid? She, uh, she takes a cut, but you, it's usually a gross up. So like we'll use a thousand dollars. Like I get, if I get a thousand dollars and there's uh-huh. 20%, she gets 200. But what she does, she grosses up. So she gets 200. I get a thousand. That's it. Oh, so like, oh, so you end up charging twelve hundred. Correct. In this example, because the that's what grow. Okay, gotcha. Right. And that's how she yeah, grossing up. Yep. So, so all right. So a PR person's job is basically to connect the dots media. Uh, with media and stuff. But then also, like you said, she said to smile more. Like, so does she like like she, does she give you like advice on your image kind of thing? Like, how yeah, because you want to you want to build the brand. Yeah. You know, you, you want to like connect to the public more and like. You know, but a lot of people don't know about DJing. Like, it's a lot of work. You know, I, I'm not like, for instance, I use Casper a lot because he's been DJing since he came out, probably out of his mom. <laughs> yeah, and you and, and, and you guys had the ninth baby. I love this headline: the uh, Jocelyn gives birth to ninth baby, a hip hop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The song yeah so, shit. can we clear up voicemail and what my <laughs> partnership is with Casper and yeah, yeah, yeah. all that stuff? I'm yeah, not. Yeah. I don't sing. I do marketing and SEO and branding and and you know, we partner together in, you know, business stuff. Casper's an artist and he does amazing musical things. He's production. You know, I have insight because the songs we write or whatever kind of correlate to our lives and like, oh yeah, that sounds good. That's cool. You know, like how's it rhythm, rhythmically? I can't even talk, let alone sing. So, um, you know, we have uh, discussions about that stuff, but ultimately he is the producer and he does all that stuff. My job is like press and and people and like I call it the gotcha. major G of life. I go out and I'm like, hey, and this yeah. is Casper and this is Nick and you know we all should get along and then we're gonna have a party over here and that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. And that's how you get because you had that song voicemail that came out. Yeah, and there's a, you know, we have more music coming out too. It just it's a, it's a lot. It's you know like try to balance everything, but you know you, you don't have as much time as you thought you would. Um, yeah. But that's that because people are like, oh, he he's auto tuned and singing. I'm like, I don't sing, dude. Yeah, it's not me <laughs> at all. It says featuring Casper. Like, he's singing. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like DJ Khaled. He doesn't sing. He's just producing and pushing shit out and there. He drops his one-liners. You know, Another one. That's it. But it's brilliant. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. And that's what he did. And people can shit on him all they want, but he's a multimillionaire. And look well, who he's connected what Khaled to. Does. It's like... Yeah. He's got that's the connections. What he, does. He, puts, he, puts he puts together. Justin Bieber and Usher in the same room. Like, you know what I mean? Like, in like, you know, yeah, he make goes, magic. I'm pay you 10 million, 10 million. Yeah, work together and you're not leaving this room. You're shitting, eating, sleeping here until you produce at least two songs. Exactly. All right, so yeah, here's your money, bye. Yeah. You know, so. That's it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's a way to make money. That's for sure. You know what I mean? You know, there, I still get intimidated going to, you know, like gigs and stuff like that. You know, uh, my buddy owns like, um, Ultra Bar and um, Ultra what's the Bar. other one in Ultra Bar. In, uh, it's in DC and Heist and uh, um, yeah, I heard of them. What's the big one? Or, yeah, they're like big things, but like I'm not a TS though. People are like, oh, you want to meet him? I'm like, oh, okay. Afterwards, yeah. I don't want to meet him like before he goes on and he's thinking John Gosselin and shit. I'm like, why is he here? You know, I just like I want to meet you in like your normal environment. Yeah. Like as a person, you know. Yeah. It it's sense. the same as like L- living in LA was like that. I don't want to go to the set. I just want to go to your house and drink and sit in your pool. <laughs> exactly. It's a real yeah, person. I'm like a human. Because I'm from Reading. You know, yeah. it's not, I didn't grow up in LA. I didn't go to acting school. I didn't do this. You know. How long did you live there in LA? Uh, back and forth like two years. Yeah. Is it like. Because yeah. I had to fly home. Uh, it's better for me now because I can go experience things. But yeah. when I was there, I was like paparazzi and I couldn't like do anything. And now I go back. I have like a bucket list of all the stuff I want to do. Like when I go, like I have to do like a shoot or something like that. And then I just walk around and meet people and hang out. And Like w- w- did the paparazzi just follow you everywhere? Like, you know what I mean? Like what was yeah. that like? Like just like. Oh, 2009 kind of, like, was awful. They, yeah. Like they staked out your house kind of like, thing. And then when you left, they knew you le- left and they just followed you kind yep. of thing. Yep, yep. Oh. But I'm a, I lived in the country, so it was a lot. Of, it was easy to get away. They're from New York. Yeah, true. They don't they don't, they don't stand a chance in the country. <laughs> Up on the dirt road. <laughs> yep, I took my four wheeler to my neighbor's hide hide the Beamer in the barn and leave. Bye. Like, at the peak, are you glad like the peak is over? You know what I mean? Like of the peak of fame. You know when you had the paparazzi and like you're getting stopped every five <sighs> seconds, kind of thing, or like. Like, I go over this get like old really fast, you know. I go over this. I'm like, why didn't I start DJing then? Because, you know what I mean. I didn't yeah. really have a lot of good guidance, so I was just kind of like, hide, running and hiding, running and hiding, and going through lawsuits. But if I started DJing then, game changer. Mm-hmm. But I didn't think of like that. I was so emotional at that point; it nothing was crossing my mind. Wait, I felt betrayed by the network, betrayed yeah. by my family, but betray- like my wife, and you know, I didn't know what to do. I felt like a lone man on an island, and like you, I had to go out. Sorry. Well, you said you said Kate betrayed you. No, I just felt betrayed because I was getting divorced. Gotcha. And the network didn't back me up, and these are people I worked with for like six years. Every day, yeah, so you, build a you know, relationship just with them. a lot of shit was going on. And then I had all this money and I was young and stupid. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to move to Manhattan. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> That's expensive. <laughs> Very <laughs> expensive. Top three, I think, like most expensive places in the world to live. It's like Tokyo, Manhattan, and like Dubai or some shit. Like it's like right there. Yeah, my, I would put Miami on there now. Miami's up there. Mm. Yeah. I mean, So you kind of like, I don't know. So you were just kind of going through it and then like, yeah, you had like a, like a three, four year period. It was just kind of like, I, so now it was like, so I think from June of 2009 to December of 2009, where I had negative press, most people today judge me on that time period. So just six months. What were they saying? Oh, just like, oh, he parties too much. He, he doesn't take care of his family. He, you know, uh, just okay. whatever TLC put out there in the press, they're just like, because there's no, like, we're going to recant that statement in another article. No one's going to read the recant. No one gives a shit. They're only going to read what they read. So, and, like, and I know I took care like of my that. kids. 
Yeah. Yeah. That happens but they're all allowed the time. to say shit like that because of the contracts, right? Like, aren't there, like, reality TV show contracts where they can basically, yeah. like, kind of portray you the way they want? So They like... can say whatever they want. Discovery yeah. Channel is the largest media outlet in the world. They're in 190 countries. <sighs> they can do whatever they want. It's they make brutal, man. billions a quarter. You are nothing. Now, our show is huge. And then when I quit, stocks drop, but... They just re- they just get that money back. They don't care. Yeah, and then That's on it. to the next one, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, consider it a loss. What and, they can consider a loss, and let's film my six hundred pound life or something. I don't know. Go film the Duggars. That's a look great how well show, that. Way. Look how well the Duggars worked out. I never Not seen good. the Duggars, but my six hundred pound life. Oh, I I genuinely enjoy that show. I yep. just be cracking up. <laughs> it's the, it's like, the best fucking hey. show ever. I like I like the hoarder stuff and like they will come the hoarder in and clean too? everything up. Crazy. I'm in there looking for and vinyl. Afters. Yo, they got vinyl records in there. How much are they worth? So yeah, they, yeah, it's, it's different. Like not I just have a gem- it, I have a public and private life. I have a private life when I'm at work. No one knows where I work. Yeah, I didn't put it on LinkedIn or anything. And yeah. then it's just better that way. I've been through this many times. Had different jobs. Um, my girl now, she's not public, although she's on my Instagram and hers a lot. But it's just better to live your life private and then outside of here, DJ-wise, that's my public life. You know, TV and I, you know, I have some shows that I filmed and will air this summer. But that just is business. That's it. Are, and, are you, you know, I thought, I thought of TV? Uh, I did a docu-series with my daughter. Oh, that's cool. Who, Hannah? About, yeah, about, I guess, the shitty parts of TV, reality TV. Mm. And, like, how it was interesting to hear her perspective, because she was so young, and what my perspective, and, like, why I did certain things. And then she heard why I did certain things, and she's like, oh, my God, that makes so much sense now, because she's putting this story together in her head. So that'll, that'll be interesting. And then... um I don't know. It's just, uh, you know, DJing is a challenge and people tend to think of themselves as, oh, you don't understand. I'm like, dude, we understand. I, it's like, like venue owners and all that shit. Like we get it. Like venue owners are like TLC. I'm just, you can't play hip hop. Well, I'm not working here. <laughs> like, Fucking put the needles away and go home. That's that's Second Street Harrisburg, man. I, I had to I had to do five hour sets with zero hip hop whatsoever. I hate that. Just no, hire more security. I'm not, I'm not like, doing it. Like I'm it's, too it's, like old and and structured and black and white to have a fucking thirty year old manager tell me I'm not what I'm gonna play. Yeah, I'm out. I don't three hundred, four hundred, five hundred. I don't give a fuck. That that because your brand is ruined then. Mm-hmm. You invited people to your venue to hear your shit, and now this shithead is going to tell me what I'm going to play? No. No. So, you, so you've packed Never. up I'll leave. before? Oh, I would fucking be like, see ya. Yeah. And That's then they'll be like, oh, he quit and stuff, and I'd write, this motherfucker said I couldn't play hip-hop. And everyone's like, oh. It Good luck. Listen, it- it doesn't work. That's an interesting topic like, because it doesn't like, work. I am dead set against that. It's like, like you it's have borderline to take a racist. Stand. You know? Yeah. Like you can't. It doesn't work. Like not playing hip hop doesn't fucking work. Like it, 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 it just doesn't work. It hurts the club overall. It hurts the overall experience. Hip hop is such a huge part of me. Like it just. It, I, I would looking yeah, back. I dealt like, with. Why'd it. you book me? Like I dealt with it for like a, a year and a half straight, and I learned a lot because I had to really dig deep to find other things to oh, somehow yeah. make work. Because without the hip hop, so it was a good learning experience for me. But at the same time, like looking back, like I will never do that again. Like if I'm ever restricted again, like like I'm not, I'm just not. It's just not worth it. You know what I mean? Because like it's just it's not right. And then also you're dealing with people. If you're in one of those places where like they can access you and like request songs, then you got people coming up like, yo, can I hear Drake? And it's like ah, and then you don't play, it. and it's like, how does DJ not play Drake? Like this DJ sucks. You know what I mean? And they don't know that you're not allowed oh, or you just say, oh, I'm not allowed. And like, I don't know. It's just all bad. It's just a terrible. I'm story. like, talk to the manager. I'm leaving. Like it, it, if every DJ had the same like 
point of view. Like, if, if every DJ just said, fuck that, we're not going to do that and not DJ there, then, like, any bar that wants to be like that, they, they're they not going to be able to get away with it, or they're just going to put a touch tunes in and not have, like, their club nights anymore. Like, you know what it's I mean? Like like it's like telling just... a painter, it's like telling an artist painter, he can't use red. Mm -hmm. Can't use that color. He'd be can't like, oh, fuck it. yourself. Fuck you. <laughs> I'd be like, red everywhere, red. Yeah. And I've done the opposite, where he told me, I, someone told me, oh, you can't play, and I just bang it out. We're not going to pay you. And I just keep going. I don't care. Don't pay me. Just I have, a fucking, I have a fucking job. Like, this is yeah. like, this is my Etsy, bro. Like, I enjoy yeah. doing this. You know, like, I, I just want to be out there and well, it's, but, there's too much like, oh, we don't want to make this person mad. And we don't want to make this person mad. And we don't want to do this. And like, yeah, just like, don't worry about that. Like, everything worked well in the 90s. You just let it flow. When we got into, like, the intricacies of everything and pleasing everybody, that's when it all fell apart. Because you're never going to please everybody. Everyone's oh, different. No, I And everyone plays different. And, and then there's the monetary issue. And this is a huge issue with DJs. Well, I'm not, you know... We all have to... Like, it's inflation. Shit's expensive. Groceries are, like... Re Ridiculous. This Dunkin' Donuts costs $4. Like... Yeah. Two years ago, it was like two bucks for a cup of coffee. Like how? It's fifty. Been a crazy couple of years. How is that possible? And like, or twice as much. And yeah, uh, yeah I just up my prices. And like, oh, we like, I just got a booking for this private party, and like, you know, I'm like, this is how much it is. And mm -hmm. they're like, well, we're friends. I don't give a shit who your friends are. Like, mm -hmm. that's how much it is. Because I gotta think. I gotta drive there. I gotta unload my shit, which is a bitch. There's probably stairs. Murphy's Law suggests there will always be stairs if I give in to pricing. <laughs> and I'll be fucking furious and bitching. And, an and my ice girlfriend sculpture. will be like so mad. Yep. Murphy's then I gotta... Law. Listen, I'll go down the stairs to load in. That I have to go up the fucking stairs to leave. Mm -hmm. And I will be so pissed off. My knees and my back will be hurting. And like, no one wants to go with me. So no one's going to help me carry shit. Yeah, it's just, like, bad. So I just Not don't worth it. give. I'm, like, on Google Earth, like, I'm on my map and satellite view. Yeah, there's fucking stairs. That, that's $100. <laughs> at least, that's $100. At least. Dude, I've had it's, clubs. It, oh, brutal it, it, leaving at night. When it comes to weddings, the Murphy's Law is if you give them a deal, there's always an ice sculpture. Every single time, I swear to God. Anytime I've ever given a free cocktail hour <laughs> or any kind of deal for a wedding, I get to the wedding and there's just an obnoxious ice sculpture that they probably paid some Scandinavian dude like four grand with a chainsaw to make. And I'm just like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> like every time. Like, yeah, I'm like you like, guys got me, you motherfuckers. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm mad I'm, and always, now I'm angry DJ. I screw myself. <laughs> like I screwed, like... Okay, for instance, DJing in Atlantic City. Where the fuck are you going to park? And then you got to hand truck your shit? Oh, yeah. Like, I play on turntables. Cool. and I play the S11, and I have RP8000s now, but sometimes I bring oh, my nice. techs out. But like, are nice. Is, yeah, but uh, is the DJ booth elevated? I'm fucking 5'8", and now i got to climb up this. You know, like, termites are holding this fucking ladder together. On a ladder, and you're yeah. trying to hold your shit. With one, yeah, I've been there. That's like that, you know where that is, like across from fucking Tropicana, like down that way. Yeah. And I forget what it's called, but it's like, who the fuck designed this shit? <laughs> and then no one of my human nature. And then, or like you got to park here because this lot's closed. Now you got, now you're, it's 95 degrees. You're carrying your backpack, your turntables, a mixer on a fucking hand truck down the boardwalk. You look like them dudes with the speaker on the bike. Like, it's just ugly. Yeah. It's ugly. Everybody's like, what? Everybody's like what's you're, this guy doing? Like, fuck wearing nice shirt because it's done. Oh, yeah. You're sweating. You're done. You're sweating to death. You got pants you know, on. I'm it's thinking, the middle of like, summer. You know, and I'm like, oh, I should have just brought a controller or CDJs or something. <laughs> like, I should have just sh showed up and have them give me the equipment. Whatever. Exactly. Who? What's your, like, uh, you know, what's the future of DJing for you? Like, what, like, are you going to, like, kind of just keep it as a, like, a, like, a passion kind of thing and, like, just, like, do gigs, like, on the I side mean, here and there, or? It's funny, because my boss here asks me what I want to do in five years. I'm like, well, he's going to retire. And I'm like, well, no, it's a five-year no, plan. 
And I'm like, I don't even, like, I'll be 51 then. So I'm like, uh, I'll probably just, I mean, my plan is to actually like go on tour and go to different states. I want to yeah. know what it's like to DJ a club in like Missoula, Montana. Me too. Do man. they go to clubs in Missoula, Montana? Like they got party somewhere. It can't just be all country. Cause I think that's bullshit. Like I play country music, but like there's gotta be like EDM and some, something going on. It's a big, we have I a think big you're country. Right. And I think I found that like any of like the, the, the middle of nowhere States, you know, there you, most of the time there's nothing to do, but drink. So they rage. Like, like I, I've been to yeah. Iowa before and they rage in Iowa. They Correct. just get fucked up. <laughs> you know, yeah, so like, we're so used to like, Oh, we live in the Northeast and that's all that exists. Dude. I just drove from, I had an appearance in Atlanta I, and I went to Buckhead. So I was in Atlanta for two days uh-huh. and then I told my girl, like, let's go to Myrtle beach. And then, like, see how that works. And all the what clubs and like? shit are there. It was awesome. Like, yeah, super laid back, but, like, open format. Like, you start yeah. thinking, like, oh, my God, I would crush it here. Because oh. you see the people and, like, you just kind of get it. Yeah. And then I, I'm telling you, Raleigh's a hidden gem. Raleigh, North Carolina. I went back to really? Raleigh. It's the fastest growing city in the United States of young people, either married or unmarried, without children. So what do you think they do with their money? Rich. And you got three cop. You have all that. You have the triangle there. You got like Wake Forest, NC State, UNC. Mm-hmm. You got all these schools. The, this one street it had like sixty bars and clubs. Huh. And then I was looking at the DJs. I'm like, dude. And I'm sorry if you're on here, but bro, get off your phone. You're DJing. You don't even have a fucking microphone plugged in. How do you even communicate with anyone? You're getting paid. Like it's like hurtful. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, there's Sean, he's a DJ. Because most people don't think I have a normal job, that I just do this. And, uh, you know, now he's, they're identifying me with him. I'm like, I don't DJ like that, bro. Like, twist the knob or turn something, talk on the phone, you know, like, hit a girl up, take a request, interact with your crowd. And there were hundreds of people there. Hundreds. And I'm like, what the fuck are you playing? Yeah. Like, and I don't want to give requests because I'm not that guy. Like, I don't want to be the DJ that requests. But I was just like, I'm like, we got to, she's like, my girl's like, oh, we got to go. Because she knows. She's like, this transition was horrible. <laughs> like, when you're dancing and it's like, oh, oh I don't know Heard how to follow. Good time. It. Oh, yeah. She's like, oh, we're I'm, going to the next place and the next place and the next place. So. I, I think you I think every it. DJ listens to other DJs and like if it's if it's really good they love it and if it's really bad they, they you know they have the exact same thoughts it's just like it's innate in you like you can't help it but like I've been trying so hard lately like the last like couple <sighs> of years to just like not pay attention to like you want to teach like, them like I just I want to teach have a good them time. I just want to be like when you hear this drop and if you're gonna mix into it it's like visually and sound wise it should just match it just matches phrasing. Phrasing. I don't know, like, the words and the terminology, but, like, I just want to grab the, the turntables and be like, see? Yeah. Wasn't that easy? Crossfader. Yeah. Good. Work on that for a while. Change your life. So, so you, are you going to do, like, a tour? You're going to do, like, the John yeah, I, get I the tour of, bus? Let me I know. I thought about that. Like, no, I literally thought about, and my girl thinks I'm crazy, getting a truck Getting what a fifth experience wheel. would it be though? It'd be awesome. I want a to- like I want a toy hauler to put all okay. the equipment in. So you know yep. that's a camper for all yep. the people that live in the city. A toy hauler is a fifth wheel <laughs> or tow behind RV mm-hmm. that the back is separated for your toys like motorcycles, ATVs, all that shit, snowmobiles. But I want to put all my speakers in there and go on tour. And I want to film. I want to. I want to film the whole thing. Like, oh, John Gosselin's at our hillbilly bar in the middle of Wyoming, and he's ready to play. There's the next like, reality on the TV show. Like, on the spot. Pitch it. On That's the spot, I'm ready to pitch it. Like, just show up in your Dodge 2500, towing your fifth wheel, park yeah. that shit at some random campground, take all them speakers, put them in the back of the truck, go to a any bar, and just crush it. And be like, wasn't that amazing? I'm leaving. And just do Next place spot. to place. I would. That, that's mm-hmm. literally. I, I would. I would. That's a bucket list. Because it's go, like, really open city, format. City just, it's yeah. it's it's extremely organic. You don't know who the fuck's gonna be there. 
you don't know your audience at all. You can research it all you want, but it, like out there is going to be country and like I have like Morgan Wallen remixes and all this shit, and I, I just kind happen lately. Yeah, He's that's so huge. Yeah, so and then just like mix it all together and then see what happens. I mean, there's times you're going to fail. Oh, I don't like yeah. this music and this is the Bible Belt and blah blah blah. But some and then there's ones you're going to kill it. But failure is only leads you to success because. You know, you, I just try not to make the same mistakes twice because it's so painful to recover. Um, but, you know, you know when you mess up when you're DJ, Like, you just, oops, my shit's I, off. I, sometimes I duck under the table when it happens. I'm just Like, you start sweating. But, like, no, yeah. lay people don't there. understand, like, what's going on. They're just, That's like, what I in hope. it. I always think there's there's someone that yeah. heard that and, and there is someone, I suck but now. Like, damn it! Really, it would take huge balls to walk up to you and be like, "Yo, you fucked up that transition." Yeah, yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like, no one's gonna say that. I'd probably cry. I'd be like, "I know, man. I know." <laughs> I'm like, I will never play those two songs together ever, ever. In my t- I make notes, my comments. I'm like, like I'll do like, there's like triple beat songs and shit. I'm like, uh, you know what? Mm. I tried to transition this, and it's not good. Yeah, I'm this not is... ever, ever fucking doing these two songs together again. <laughs> Same. I probably have like one... you're a kindergartner, like oh, my hands they don't work. <laughs> but if Bad. you're not messing up, then you're not taking risks, and that's how I feel about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, that, that's why I'll mess up probably once or twice every gig. And, like there's a little yeah. mess here, there, but uh, but I'm but it's because I'm trying some shit I never tried before. You know, and like yep. so let's see if Live this works, is... or let's see if these songs go together and. Yeah, if live you mess is a up, whole, that means you're playing the same shit. If you, know? you get sweaty when you're playing, and that's good. That pressure, like my best sets where I was extremely fucking pissed off, and I just hammered through it, and people are like, that was amazing. I'm like, yeah, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> mad. <laughs> like, it was the best set, but you're like in this, like, oh, you got in a fight with your girl, and you don't want to, now you got to go home, and you're like, oh, but like, oh, my God, that was amazing. And it was just like angry rap. The whole time, you're like, uh, uh, uh. John. Random situation. You're playing. You're playing at a. You're playing somewhere. You're, let's say you're playing at a club, right? You're DJing, uh-huh. and you look up, and your ex-wife Kate walks in. What do you play next? What are you doing? Move, bitch, get out of the way. <laughs> shout, shout out to Kate. <laughs> There's some hoes in this house. There's some hoes. In- <laughs> Fucking crazy. Um, I, well, I, you know what I'd probably do? I'd probably be like, are the kids... Like, I'd probably like, why are you... Is something wrong with one of our children? Because I haven't seen her in years. Like, I don't really? see her. Yeah. 2018, maybe. So the last time I saw her. Wow. Do you guys talk at all? Like, I was... No, no. Nope. Wow. So it's like... I'm like, there's Karen. Karen's here. She is the original <laughs> Karen, man. She's I know, like right? I'm a haircut. Like, and I need, like she's I'm, I'm having, a sh- I'm having a shirt made. At least you didn't marry this fucking Karen. <laughs> no, walk in like my shoes shirt. for a day. I don't even have. I don't even have to sell shirts. I'm just making one shirt. It'll be the shirt. <laughs> the shirt. Because no it. one else is gonna marry her. So, I, I'm pretty set on that. <laughs> so, yeah. Looking crazy. Um, yeah, but this is a shit fucking storm life that I. Signed for, I guess. Whatever. You know what I mean? I signed up yeah. for it. I, I, I can only blame myself. You it's know? a one of a kind like, life, my friend. Like, raising eight kids is like... People are like, oh, what was it like? And I'm like, it was like shitty, dude. I had to change diapers forever and get in there and have no life and sacrifice my 20s and, you know. No, nobody's changed more diapers than you. you got to hold the world no. record. There's it's like, no It's way. like fucking crazy. I, like my kid goes through nine a day, so you times that by you had like six fifteen month olds at one, like you had six babies at once. So it's like yeah, my trash can smelled like shit. I used to give my garbage men cases of beer just to take <laughs> the fucking diaper pail. You just complete trash can full of just shitty. It diapers. just like smelled so thing. bad. Oh, like God, you know the nine, you know, imagine. you know like Jersey, like the ninety six gallon. Yeah, I bought one of them, like yeah, the yeah, big yeah. fucking thing on wheels that and it has the claw that picks it up. Yeah, that was all diapers, dude. Like. You know, and trash only comes once a week, but, so you're like, oh my god! You just feel so, dude. I just put a case of Heineken out there, like every week. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. I appreciate my sanitation workers. 
I appreciate you. You got to appreciate them. That's Drinking away. Nuts. Yeah. I couldn't imagine, yep. man. Yeah. There was a lot, of, lot of... That was like the shittiest deal ever, but, you know. I remind my kids that I changed all their diapers, too. So I'm like... Oh, yeah. I'll, Don't I'll, you talk I'll, to me you like to. that. I, I wiped your ass for like two years. Yeah, straight up. And You they, couldn't they even bathe yourself. Shits. Baby shits aren't cute. I thought it'd be a cute little shit. Like at first, no. it didn't stink. It was like first day or two, it doesn't stink, and then after that, it's just disgusting. It's absolute. My son takes the nastiest shits. It's unbelievable. The, yeah. The, 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 oh god, it just stinks up the whole house. It's I can't horrible. Imagine six. Oh my god. Girls are the worst. Girls is like horrible. I don't know what's going on biologically. I didn't even know girls. But my kids like 10 take years ago. My kids like shit when they were kids and smear all over. Uh, that's I think an episode. Smeared all over the wall. Really? Like, I can't even begin to clean that up in my brain. It was awful. And oh smile about it. Hi, Dad. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Look what I did. I wrote your name. <laughs> I mean, I, my kid's a genius. <laughs> I bet all six of you were sleeping outside today. I don't give a shit. Oh, <laughs> uh, we put, you know what you do? When your kid can move, you put, um, put a camera in the, in the nursery or whatever, like slow-mo. Yeah. And just time lapse, every, like every three seconds, take a picture. Crazy yeah. shit happens because they get up at night. <laughs> shit happens in that room. Sneaking out of the crib. Like my boy, yeah, my boys. So we had them tents, so they couldn't get out. You just okay. Uh, and the one they'd stick their finger in the zipper and and then climb out, and then go to the other kids and oh, they'd have like they're having like a fucking rave at two o'clock in the morning, taking you the shit out of the drawers and. I'm like three you wake up the next day, there's just cookies everywhere. and <laughs> There's just shit everywhere. Like, my kids are smart. Like, we'd stack gates, like your play gate thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd stand on, they'd stand on each other's back to get up, like criminals. Like, they're breaking out of jail. Like they're... That's insane. Or they'd all stand on the foot pedal because they don't weigh enough. So, like, three of them would be on the foot pedal, so the gate open. Like, I should go That's work for smart. Graco and be like, I should go work for Graco and be like, that shit don't work. Let me show yeah. you why. You, 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 this you is need a to start designing the kid problem, the products. Yeah, this is a higher or a multiple issue because you're all thinking about one baby. Now, like, everyone's having kids late and they're, they're ha- they have more, over, uh, more uh, follicles and they're having more babies and there's more twins. Mm-hmm. And, like, they need a whole, like, protection line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's like, like my daughter would just burn herself. Ow, that hurts. And all my kids would be like, you're stupid. Daddy said, don't touch the stove. <laughs> it's like a hole. I lived through all that shit. Like, my hair fell out. I had to get two hair transplants. Gray hair. I got gray in my beard. I'm fucking 46 yeah. years old. And, like, you know, I used to be like, oh, I just want to have a baby. I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's magical. Don't call it, me. Do not call me. Call your pediatrician. I get yeah. DMs. My kid's sick. I'm like, why are you fucking messaging me? Call your pediatrician. I I'm not gonna lie. You. I do look at you as a slight expert. I've, uh, I think I text you like once or twice. It's like, does this, does this go away? Yeah. <laughs> or uh, should I tell my wife? No. <laughs> Don't tell. You. No. Go get that. Don't tell the producers and, either. So my, it happened. With my son. We had paparazzi outside, and he ran around a wall. Like we had a half wall, and he lacerated his eye, like blood. My oh, girls shit. freaked the fuck out. Yeah. There's paparazzi out front. They followed us. Like with the security team to the doctor. He like I had to get that all st- so I look like a bad dad, right? I look horrible. Oh my god. Like yeah. I let this shit happen and like now it's all photographed. Yeah, uh, like the, like the, like all the times where like you didn't want like they, they were there taking pictures of it the whole time. Like like any like Oh, I've had so many you mess up his parents, like you know what I mean? Like that's like brutal. random accident. I had a bad, I had a dinner interview with People Magazine in Reading. I, I live out in the country, like probably eight miles from where I was having dinner. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm throwing, I'm throwing them back. People's paying for shit. I'm drinking, so I'm throwing them back. We're talking. Get a call from the babysitter. Gotta come home. We're calling the ambulance. Like, what the fuck is going on? So I have a stretch limo, like, and I'm like, dude, we're hauling. I didn't eat. I'm drunk. I'm going back. Cops are at my house because they're first responders. Oh. So apparently, now the two that live with me, Hannah's in the bathroom. Colin's trying to get into. No, 
our big, we had a big house, seven bathrooms. We're like, why the fuck are you still trying to go in the same bathroom? My son puts his hand in the jam on the door and cuts his fingertip off. Because my daughter slammed the door. Whew, gone. So you gotta grab the finger, put it in ice, go to the ho- Oh so, my god. Wait, so it's Colin, it was Colin? Uh, yeah. And it, and his finger. Hearing, gone. Right in the jam of the like, gone. Did they sew it back so they, on? Like, yeah, they sewed it back on. My kid got it, put it in the ice. And, they're like six years old. Again, I had an interview with People Magazine. I look like a bad parent. Yeah. It's just bad. <laughs> and then you had a few drinks because you were out. You had a babysitter. Like, oh, yeah. So you're, you're, now, you're an alcoholic. You're going to the hospital. Fucking... Alcohol on your breath. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because wow. you got. You what was that headline? Just let your kid go. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I just kind of, I just try to block shit out. Who knows? You'll probably Google me. <laughs> yeah. Google. But you said this shit, like, I'll be DJing. And people will ask me, like, yo, what, what was it like? I'm like, dude, I'm fucking playing music. Like, if I have an opener, it's so weird. Like, I'll have an opener, and I'll just be standing there, drinking, hanging out. Yeah. And no one talks to me. As soon as I get on the fucking turntables. Oh, can we get your picture? Blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 da. How was it like? Did you cheat on your wife? I'm like, this is a fucking... It's People Magazine and E.T. out here. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And yeah. like like the dudes that play with me, like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, I don't know, bro. I'm like, I don't know what to do right now. I'm like, I got to, you know, because I do like, I'll do like a 20 song quick mix like you. Like, ding, 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 ding. Like real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, if you, you can't... Ma- There's no leeway. You're just like getting that shit done. And then people are like, what if I touch that? And I'm like, don't touch that. Please, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, I fucking oh, yeah, hate that's, that. That's my favorite. I just See, kick these are the things Go we away. talk about. Go away. If, like in a lounge, like they'll like get behind or like they'll somehow sneak behind there. I'm like, and they, you know, I'm like, I have phase, so it's spinning. And yeah. they're like, if I touch that, will the music stop? Yes. Or can I wear your headphones? I'm like, no. You can't. It, Go away. Bro, we went through this thing for two years. It's called COVID. Where we didn't even... We had six-foot circles around each other. Yeah. You're not now you want to wear my shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a dick. I just say, no. Go. Leave. Oh, I am. Go away. And Go away. But, like, I just... I can't stand that shit. <laughs> here's another one. Why are you putting shot glasses and beer glasses on my fucking subs? Of um, all the things in the whole entire room. They'll... They'll, they'll do it on my furniture. I use like the, I have a furniture piece when I do weddings. And yeah, they literally I, put like a, a cold Corona right on my shit. No coast. I'm like, do you use coasters at home? You don't got a coaster? No, this is no. wood, bitch. These are Why animals. Why just put your, condes- like your the, the condensations on there and shit? And just slap it. They, they literally put it on the corner of my furniture and then go dance. And like, it's just a green. You know, this I slap it right like, off. <laughs> this interview gets on off track. But like probably everyone in this room is like, yep, yep, yep. It's yep. true. It's, it's everywhere. It's true. We oh, yeah, it's fucking 142. Jesus. We're... I just realized what time it is. My bad, I can man. talk forever. Sorry. Part, <laughs> part two. Me too. <laughs> I appreciate Sorry. you coming on, man. Interview. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, no you problem. coming on. Any Yo, any any final thoughts? Anything you want to I would come to your gig this weekend. Oh. Uh, uh, you let I'll me know. i back at Capitol Grill April, 20, 20, April 21st. And they have this thing. I've been Googling it. It's called Bloomsburg Block Party. So I guess I'm kicking that shit off. Are you really? Because that's insane. I heard. I never been, but I heard yeah. that's insane at Bloomsburg. So, right, so you're gonna like be there you, April 21st. If, yeah, and I have an apartment up there, three bedrooms, three baths. So if you want to stay, we're good. Word. And then we'll what just. What day of the week is that? Uh, Saturday. Let me see. Dep- oh no, I DJ on a Friday, but block party Friday. starts Saturday. Cool. So if you don't have a wedding, we'll I'll be check. like yeah. perusers of a shit show. Sounds good to me. And yeah, if you want to come to Penn State or whatever, let me know too. I'll be there this Friday if you're around. Yeah, I want to you know, talk to him about that. I would love just to play there just to... It's a cool spot. The, good people a, too. Penn, Penn, Penn State's staff. the first place I got paparazzi. So it'd be like a culmination. It'd be There's reasoning <laughs> behind it. Yeah, yeah. There's a... I got... I, yeah, <laughs> it's I... Nostalgic. It was real, My mother was super fucking pissed off because I'm like, at, I'm like a 30-year-old dude. I'm playing beer pong with like all, all these girls. I just got divorced. Paparazzi's following me, and I get photographed in Penn State. It was bad because my mom lived up there. And it was just—I oh, had man. fun, but it yeah. was like, like dumb, dumb shit. <laughs> I did dumb shit. I well, just put could... myself in bad, 
I just put myself in situations that I didn't really think about because no, there was no angel on my shoulder like saying, "Yeah, don't do that." Yeah, there's just a PR just like person. A, every like, once in a while, fuck, I mean, like fuck you, I pay you. I'm gonna like yeah, you're yeah. drunk, so you're like just yeah, yeah, going yeah. through the motions. And then one day <laughs> I just calmed down because it was probably stupid. I got same here, man. But like DJ wise, like I'm just gonna keep on going, and I, you know I have ideas, um, cool. and I just kind of just do it and take the risk and it it works out it might not work out how you want it to work out but like it you're starting a foundation it's the same as filming the first family reality show ever no one knew and we just did it and now here we are and that's it that's it man it's history you know everyone's creating history as you do things so I'll, i'll i'll be there for the tour i'll be there for the tour if you do it you let me know appreciate yeah. you uh are we bringing, are we bringing your though. kid with you because this is gonna be <laughs> nah nah <laughs> depends when but no not till he's i'll older. do like i'll do weekly blocks with different djs yeah have you ever Seriously. been to wyoming no get get in the fucking rv we're going to Wyoming. let's go get in the car loser how do you feel about <laughs> how do you feel about uh people open carry state everyone has their ar and sidearms and yeah we're going there I'm playing all the requests there. That's it. That's that's, yeah. that's one thing. Yes, son. <laughs> Yo, no problem. No problem. Wailing Jennings coming right up. Got it. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks, man. Fun. I appreciate you, brother. We'll definitely yeah, have man. you on again and ship. And um, yeah, and yeah man, I'll be in AC Th- this weekend just partying. Okay. So work. Yep. Shit. Well, yeah, hit me up, man. So. All right. Let's sounds go. good. Yeah. Happy birthday. Later, right, bro. Thanks. Peace. Appreciate you, man. All right, people. So, tonight, Twitch, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure you come on out. I'm going to be on Twitch. It's going to be a great time. I'm going to play all the hits. Uh, Shouts to John Gossam for coming on today. I had a fun time interviewing him. He's like... I'm just lucky, man. It's not every day you get to like talk to people that like been through like such a unique situation. You know what I mean? Like how all that inner stuff works. So I, don't know. I hope you guys thought it was valuable. I, I just think it's interesting. You know, like it, it's, it's crazy. You know, not all of us are going to be on a reality TV show like that and everything. And like, you know, it, it's definitely a crazy situation. And for him to like jump into the DJ game like that. You know what I mean? Afterwards, and you know, it, it's definitely uh, a lot of pressure. You know, because like DJs don't, uh, you know, really vibe with that usually. You know, and uh, he uh, practiced, and you know, and and got good, and and just you know, made friends, and you know, just kept at it. You know, I think a lot of people would have quit, and uh, he didn't. So I respect the guy a lot, and uh, I think he's a really cool dude. And hopefully, you enjoyed the interview. So I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you so much. Happy Tuesday again. And, um, yeah, see you on Twitch tonight. And then, of course, next week, same time, 12 p.m. Eastern time, we do the show. So love you all. Have a great week. Crush your events this weekend. And I'll see you next week.